So guys, right now we're at a high pro pharmacy, pun intended pharmacy, isn't it? Um, we'll do some shopping for the chickens and so we we'll take up some selminox because the selminox it really helps with you know the growth of the chickens and we realize. We got Razor Farm. We eat what we grow at High Pro. So guys, welcome to another Farmer Khalil vlog we're out here in St. Catherine and I really have a nice vlog for you. So today we're going to ship the focus and we'll look at a poultry farmer, a very popular guy, raised right farm. I think his popularity was spelled off because he was using that innovative, youthful marketing strategy where he had like a famous song that was talking about how he raised poultry animals. So he's doing very successful and I really wanted to highlight him today. I'm going to kind of look at his management practices, what him do to ensure that he's making a profit and dive into challenges that he faces. Then we kind of talk about a general approach to how it, I think that the requirements for a successful raised poultry farm should be operated. So come walk with us and let's meet our guests. So guys, we're here with Mr. Reyes, right? Farm Akali, what go on? Well, I tell you. Welcome to the farm. Proud of this guy, proud of him. Excellent, innovative, marketing strategy I think is perfect. 21st century poultry farmer yeah, man. let's go guys let's go visit inside this place minister that's a new face of food yeah the new <laughs> face i agree with him so let's go have a look and we are going to cook so guys one a very important thing for you is biosecurity so before i go on anybody farm especially a chicken farm i forget my plastic boots drop them on don't want to carry no disease from outside no bacteria nothing no insect and to the man Top on notch farm, so we make sure I protect myself. All right, buy security, guys, and very important. All right, so this is how I got started. So, December, we're in now 2024. So, December 2022, my girl and I we kept a cake sale, right cake sale going good because I work at a call center and I'm kind of well known because I'm always you know marketing myself personally you know and my business as well so you know the cake sale went well we were well supported and you know, I say yo seeing that I have people in you know, my circle where you know in you know, the chicken business in you know, the poultry farm and you know, it's going good for them you know why not learn some things from them and then venture into it so you know I started doing some research started learning and as soon as I you know, built up my knowledge to a level where I knew that I, I could start. I just run go downtown, pan Princess Street, grab a deep freeze, you know, got the hardware, get some building materials and we just, you know, build a nice coop and started off with a hundred chickens. Now I have 1,500 chickens that I'm responsible for on my farm. So guys, we have some really beautiful chicks in our hand. Is it? How old are they? Three day old. Three day old. So they're going through the brooding stage, guys. Remember, brooding very important. Get those heat lamps, keep them warm. Watch how you feed them. Make sure the, the, the litter is not too wet. But I think I just know the theory. I'm not really a chicken farmer. This is the boss of chicken farming. <laughs> so I'm going to lead everything over to him for him to kind of run through his steps, especially during this stage, for him to get him animals to market the right way. And we could start right here. So over to you, big boss. All right, let's go. We can I put on the birdie? Yeah, man, put on the birdie, man. <laughs> there you go, freedom. All right, so I'm gonna start off by, you know, explaining from day one straight up, Zin. So first day, we go by Hyper because Hyper always are giving good quality chicks, isn't it? So we stop by Hyper. We go as early as we can because the earlier we get the birds transported to the farm, the better it is for them. So. Go to, go to High Pro, get the chicks. Um, we set up the brooding area a day or two before, you know, flush out the sawdust, give the sawdust a day or two for breeze out because, you know, the sawdust, it kind of have a strong scent where it needs for breeze out for a day or two before the chickens them can actually run on it. So we set up the brooding area, drop the tarps, turn on the heat bulbs them. Um, when we get the chicks now on the farm, you know, make sure them have adequate feed, give them some water. We like to give them um, some glucose right off the bat or some sugar and water to get them energy level up um, hypervit can can work as well and you know we just leave them at the brooding area give them a week we like to give them probably like an extra two three day 
Um, so maybe like a week and three days to brood properly and then we just start transport them out to the bigger crops. So guys are glad this is the importance of brooding from the technical man himself. But one thing I want to remind you, what I like is that we're doing this for a profit and there are some parameters that we can check. So one of them is a seven day ratio or a seven day wait. Mm -hmm. Some farmers do have a scale, but I'd advise you to get a scale, weigh that animal at day one, at least say 10 of them or 20 of them and check the weight at seven days. What you want to achieve is a four times effect. So say the animal just weigh 10 grams when you get him for the first time. You want him weigh 40 grams in seven days. Once you get that four time effect, you know what the feed is working and you reach to your market weight quicker and that means your operation is doing what it's supposed to do. It's a quick check for you. Remember, the seven day weight guys must be four times from when you get it from the very first day. The parameter to ensure that you're on your way to success. So what kind of health challenges do you think you face here? or what you have experienced um, as, a, as a farmer that raises chickens? All right, health conditions. Um, first, let's touch on, you know, chickens getting injured. You know, animal, it's just a part of the process. An animal rearing, animal have got injured themselves. What we try to do is, once we see a chicken with, you know, a flappy wing or maybe a sprained foot, we try to, we have, we have a coop here where you know, we put like, we call it a hospital cook them. <laughs> you see me? So we try to separate them from, you know, the flock because you know them can't really keep up with the flock. The flock might trample them. You know, they might fall back in terms of weight gain. Yes. So we try to separate, you know, the wounded and the sick. Um, what I, I try to listen for coal and okay. the chicken in them chest. You see me? You can hear, you can hear the way you're saying, know, the ruffle. Mm -hmm. You can hear the coal. Um, I I tr I love to use um what is what was it what is it called um gravital oral yes I like using the gravital oral it's the same it's basically garlic to me yeah, isn't it, it, is. it has a strong yeah. garlic scent I like using that and you know sometimes when I drop that pan the chicken them two three days I go back in the coop I now hear nothing I say oh <laughs> it clear up them chest <laughs> um but aside from that we don't really have much health issues. And that's, that's amazing. We don't really have a lot of health issues. You have time when, you know, the chickens, they might, you know, in, 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 here in poultry farming, we call, we say, yo, we get a handicapped chicken, mm -hmm. a chicken that is deformed, you know, but that's, I mean, if we get a deformed chicken, it's, it's, it's nothing much we can do to say, yo, bring it back to its, its, its natural state. Yeah. You know? Um, guys, I know a lot of farmers use garlic. A lot of them soak it in the water. Gravital, very good. It boosts the animal immune system. And I see why you're seeing good results once you're using that gravital as a product. And next thing that I think a lot of farmers, which I'm glad that you're not facing, so you're clearly doing everything right, is coccidiosis. It's a big issue. What coccidiosis do is basically damage the intestinal wall. So you don't get your feed conversion, gone down. You might see blood in the stool, the animals are just not growing. But what I like is that High Pro actually medicate the feed. This crumble feed comes with a coccidious that inside of it that basically reduces the coccidiosis. That issue that you might face. The next thing that I always advise farmers to do is to, your know, litter management is important because the coccidias are the, the imeras which that cause the problem lives inside the litter. So sometimes you have to just kind of give the pen a break or, you know, put them in heaps, the litter, make it compost to kind of kill what you have. And then coccidiosis is also a very good product to use if you have a case of coccidiosis. So I think that's probably the main one I think challenge farmers because it damages the gut and it affects how the animal put on the weight. Gut health is a very big thing everybody talking about now. So it's something that like the cell mineral that I saw you bought in the store today. Mm -hmm. Very good for gut health, help with the digestion. And it's something that farmers as a strategy to prevent any health problems or a strategy to improve your feed conversion, get products that will assist the intestinal line of the animal. So I think that's for, for me health. That's probably the major ones that we face here in Jamaica. Um what do you think about um so I use neutrumin a lot, you know, okay. neutrumin yeah. and um, yeah. sulfamid. And sulfamid. You know, yeah, think? both work. Sulfamid, very good for improvement of the, of the, of the, of the gut health. The, the neutrumin is just a good supplementation for your vitamins. And so just like the hypervit, just like the stress mix or the amino group, which is like a, you know, free protein, amino acids inside of it. So I think all that supplementation, once I'm under stress, like if the place feels too hot, me I go supplement with neutramin or I go supplement with, with the stress mix. The sulfamid, the, the copper sulfate, the gravital to me, 
is about boosting the immune system and keeping the gut health functioning properly. And without the gut, they won't put on the weight. So I think those are the main products I would tell any local farmer to kind of have on him, on him operation to ensure that they get the best results. Right. Um, also, I saw where I heard where you touched on litter. Yeah. What we tend to do is we 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 rake the kubala. Yes, good, good. So by doing that, you know, the sawdust because we sell we sell chicken food. Mm -hmm. Okay. As yes. Well. And you know, when you don't turn the sawdust and it become it it, it become we must say now tough like mm -hmm. it will come like concrete one damage the the paw yes. of the chicken so you know bring down the quality of the food mm -hmm. also it it sometimes the breast of the chicken gets scraped yeah, mm -hmm. that as well um and <clears throat> overall when we're cleaning out the pub it just it just easier when we rake it every day or every two days so we know so when we get rid of a bunch of chicken and we're going to clean out the pub it's easy for just you know shovel out so guys best practices for one businessman you want to ensure that he give you good power quality, so litter quality or litter management have to be on top because that improves the yield you can get for mm -hmm. the feed that you want to sell. I appreciate that. That, that. That's something that every commercial poultry farm focus on because if me can sell more feet, I make more profit. Mm -hmm. So what I'm just explaining to you guys, I think, is <laughs> ideal. You know what I'm doing and we can see why I'm so successful with, with this operation. So Mr. Ray is right. I know a lot of people say that boy feed is in the most expensive part of your operation. I know. Number one expense. Yeah man, number one expense. So how you manage this? Give me some strategies that you use that you think would help other farmers. Mm -hmm. And then just give me a feeding program, raising you know the amount of birds that you have here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the feeding program that I have, um it's you know, I think a lot of farmers use it as well. It's 20 bags per 100 chicken. So, you know, a thousand chicken would mean 200 bags of feed. But there are instances where you get your weight before them eat off the 20 bag. You might have a bag, a bag and a half, maybe two bags left. Because, you know, you get a good batch of chicken or you, you, brew, you brew them properly. Come back to the brooding where you just start about. So, but generally it's 20 bags per every 100 chicken. Um, in terms of the feed pan, we try to use um, one feed pan for every 40 chickens. Um, I was told though, you know, recently that I should cut it down to maybe like 30 or 25. So I'm looking into purchasing some feed pans. Um, but yeah, man, 20 bags per every, 20 bags per 100 chickens. And yeah, man, that should get them up to market weight within like six week time. So what is your marketing? What do you aim for? Um, I try to grow four pound. Okay, four pound. Four, four and a half. Um, we give them the crumble, and up from day one up until three weeks and probably like three days after that, we just convert them over to the to the big grain, the pellets. Yeah, man, and the pellets just bring them up to the six week until we're ready for bring them on the market. I like that, and I like how you bring how you a while ago you express yourself that sometimes you'll be able to get them to market with using less bags and that to me is kudos for you because something that we track is the feed conversion ratio mm -hmm. and you did ask what it is so it is that we want to see the amount of pounds of feed that we put in mm -hmm. versus the amount of weight and meat that we get out mm -hmm. and it's a very important parameter that farmers as yourself should be checking because we aim for to say 1.65 as a feed conversion ratio you know if you're doing 1.7 1 1.2 you're not doing so well you're going to spend more money with right. feed mm -hmm. to get in what you get and that way cut into your profit i mean you a businessman you, right. you know you're not you're in it for making that money mm -hmm. so it's something that i think farmers should be aware of check your feed conversion ratio guys very important that's how you know you're saving money that's you can use that as a guide for yourself challenge yourself that like i want a fcr of 1.65 next time i want fcr 1.64 and whatever strategy you have to do is environmental adjustment um, as you say, probably creating more feed pans so they have more, can eat more intake for the birds and that can shift your whole operation. And you know what I started using and I think it has really helped with the same feed conversion that you're talking about, you know, so instead of like 100 chickens eating off the whole 20 bag, maybe they might go 17 and a half, 18. Um, but it really, it really, the feed conversion or the amount of feed intake, it really went down with me still getting the same weight when I started using molasses. Really? For some reason or other, that's just... I, 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 I have a take on I that. I don't know if it's because the molasses make the water 
a little bit thicker so it, it fool the chicken more mm -hmm. or I don't know but since I started using the molasses, I realized say, it moved from maybe like 18 and a half back down to maybe like 18, 17 and 3 quarter. Yeah man. And I like that. <laughs> a lot of farmers believe in molasses and I can tell you why. Molasses are it's an energy source and these birds need energy. And so putting that in the water is really about supplementation. Mm -hmm. So if you can supplement more vitamins, supplement more energy, you will see the impact on that weight gain as you go along. So nothing wrong with it as in i know some people tell us to move away from molasses in the water but i think at certain levels you could definitely use it especially under heat stress conditions it would improve your weight gains improve that conversion that you want so it's really good that you brought that up i, I think farmers would appreciate that information yeah, man. all right so this is the part that i love talking about the most because i think that this is my specialty yes i'm a farmer colleague. yeah man i agree with um, you I know how to, you know, I know how to, I know every, a little bit of everything as a farmer, but this is my specialty, marketing. So I remember when I started out with 100 chicken and I never really have my customer. I, mean, I tell you the honest truth, brother. I never have my restaurant for say, yo, when, when I get rid of them, yeah, it's a got a restaurant or whatever. Um, I would say it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a miracle and, and hard work. Um, I remember... <laughs> The first set of chicken I'm put in, when the chicken them reach like three, four weeks, I make a video. No, when the chicken them reach like three weeks, I make a video and it went viral. And then it, another one went viral the fourth week, then another one went viral the fifth week. Straight up until I decide to harvest that batch of chicken. So, you know, when them hit the deep freeze, you know, them did gone quick, 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 quick. Um, in terms of marketing, I would tell poultry farmers, one, you know, brand yourself in a way where you know people want to work with your people people trust you to you know think of a think of a creative way how to you know tackle social media management because you know social media are the new marketing tool me like refer to it as the new marketing tool me not believe enough for print up business cards and then think that because if me give you a business card for Macaulay, maybe you throw it in your car and you know when they are detail your vehicle them good to dash it away. You yeah. know, see about that business card. Seriously, seriously. But when me can pop up on your TikTok, me can pop up on a million other TikTok too, you see me? True. So I would tell people to, you know, go hard on social media, stay consistent, um, have good communication skills when you got when you got to talk to the clients and the customers them, you know, make them make them can hear say so you have sense as a farmer. You see me, make them can use effective communication. You know, work on um, your negotiation skills. You know, enough people I got enough uh, enough enough big restaurants. I got tell us, hey, I take from the big producer them. You know, you know the big producer them. Most of the time, them them might have give at a little cheaper rate than our rate. How can you convince them? How can you you know work on the the, the, the emotions of your of your of your clients or potential customers? We say, you know, we are bust that youth here, even though we are getting it at a cheaper rate. So if we are use a thousand pound a week, chop. Let me give one 300, let me give one 400 out of that. Yeah, man. I like that. I like that. And I think, to be honest, I think your, your marketing strategy was excellent. As you said, those viral videos is what let me know you. Yeah. When I see it, I'm like, yo, this youth, <laughs> bad. Why am though if we bring to mix our Jamaican culture of, of like you know singing you know oh, music. music that everybody can appreciate and love and you turn that into a strategy for your farm? I can tell you, kudos to you, youth. Continue doing it. I only say greatness for for you from here. To be honest, I, that's all I see. And we're here to support you. The company High is here to support you. Farmer Kali will definitely do part. We carry you to the highest level you possibly can because that's what we want. I think. Our generation need to start moving that needle um, regarding agriculture. I think that's lacking, and a part of our forage council, cause the youth agrofed council, and the, our main aim is to ensure that the youth voice are heard. That's why I'm even here today, cause I want to make sure that the persons in forage, youths that we, we we distribute information to in forage, can see a young man like yourself doing this so proudly and doing such a stellar job at it. So again, raise right farm, guys. Believe me. Excellent. <laughs>